Six years the Warriors of Chaos have waited for their rework, and it's finally about to arrive. I've got access to a battles-only version of Immortal Empires, so I'll show you all the stuff that's changed with the Warriors of Chaos that's in this version, but do understand this is just the tip of the iceberg, and there's more stuff I just can't talk about yet. We'll kick it off with the Lords, and Belakor is a new addition for the Warriors of Chaos. He can now be in the Demons of Chaos roster, of course, but also the Warriors of Chaos as well. So a nice new flying Lord option for the Warriors of Chaos. He's pretty much the same as before as well. Still got the Lore of Shadows and all his powerful abilities. Belakor. There's also a new Demon Prince Lord that isn't the same as any other Demon Prince Lord as he comes with the Lore of Fire. So he's actually a caster as well. Just another nice versatile Lord option for the Warriors of Chaos. What about the OG legendary lords then of the Warriors of Chaos? Starting with Archaeon. He's the one who's had the most of a rework. There are some visual changes, like his chin's not supposed to be clipping through his armor too much anymore. I say that as it's literally clipping through the armor. And I feel like maybe his stance is a little bit different. He looks a little more powerful stood there, but I don't know. Maybe he's always been like that and I just haven't seen Archaeon on foot for a while. But the biggest changes to the lad is that he no longer just has the Law of Fire as he did before. He now has a mixed spellbook. For some abilities, we got Fight or Die, Slayer of Kings is the same. There's this new one, Armor of Morkar which gives plus 24 melee defense and charge reflection to an area. So that's pretty powerful if you used at the right moment, right before somebody's about to charge all your boys, you can get them with some charge reflection. For his new mixed spell lore, he has the Purple Sun from the old Lore of Death, the Big Vortex spell, Transmutation of Lead, Flaming Sword of Ruin, the Burning Head, Spirit Leech, and Searing Doom. So a mixture of death, fire, and metal. Seems like the perfect combination for Archaeon, really. He's still got Frenzy, Kindle Flame, he's got the Paragon of Ruin, which gives immunity to psychology and charge bonus to allies. The Crown of Domination has changed a little bit, giving Archaeon Terror. Otherwise, everything is pretty much the same. Overall, pretty nice changes. I'm not sure about the mixed lore book. I kind of liked the Fire lore. It was useful having the Fireball spell, because you could use that as kind of an anti-air tool in a faction that doesn't have a ton of range. That extra magic missile was useful. But aside from all that stuff, there's a much bigger change that's coming along with this update, and that is that Chaos Ponies are no more. The Warriors of Chaos actually now have horses that look like they could carry a 400 pound armor clad Chaos Warrior. Here's a comparison of some Chaos Knights next to Empire Knights, regular old human horses against these absolute behemoth horses that, well, make it look like the Empire are now riding ponies. So yeah, nice to see the Chaos Horses a little bit more thematically correct. For the other legendary lords, Kolek is pretty much the same old guy. He's gained a new damage dealing ability, Tempest of Rage for himself. Still got his little lightning bombardment and such. Prince Sigvold now can not only be in the Warriors of Chaos roster, but also in the Slanesh roster as a legendary lord there. Otherwise, he's pretty much the same except for these few ability changes. He has Paragon of Excess, reducing nearby enemy melee attack by five. Has a Sliver Slash ability, which will imbue him with magic damage, armor sunder his enemies, and give him a damage boost. And for Sartorial, he seems to be pretty much the same, except like Sigvold, he can now cross over into a different faction. That faction is, of course, Zinch. So Sartorial is in the Warriors of Chaos roster and the Zinch roster. And he's finally figured out how to fly as well, bless him, so he doesn't have to run around anymore like a chicken with wings that can't fly. As for the rest of the roster, it seems like some units have had a bit of a makeover, especially the two heroes. You can see those at the very start of this video in the intro. But a big new system to the Warriors of Chaos overall is the Marks of Chaos system, which now allows them to bring other types of Chaos infantry, such as the Corn version of Warriors of Chaos and the Halberd version, so you'll be able to choose between the different types. They've also gained the dual weapon ones as well, but where the Marks of Chaos system comes into play is with unit caps on, you'll only be able to bring four of these Mark of Chaos units. And it's not just Corn units that you can bring. You can bring all of these as well, potentially, and these are from all different Chaos factions. Here we've got the Chaos Knights of Zinch. They've had a very nice visual rework as well. You can see they look much nicer. Let's get up close, get a good angle, show your faces, lads. The light's on the wrong side, but you get the idea. They look very nice now. So that's a Zinch unit that you can have in the Warriors of Chaos, as well as the Doom Knights. So you can now get some flying cavalry in the Warriors of Chaos, truly changing up the versatility of their roster as well as all the other units as well. You can also get the Corn Skull Crushers, so there's some powerful anti-large armor-piercing cavalry that they didn't really have before. You want some much faster cavalry? Well, you can get these Slanesh Hellstriders as well. So you've got all these new options with the Warriors of Chaos. 
but they are limited. So they're a good way to just kind of accent your army. It's still the Warriors of Chaos overall and their playstyle and their whole vibe. But now you can just use the Mono God units to maybe fill in any holes that this roster or your army might have. So in custom battle, you've got all of these usual Warriors of Chaos units, but now you've got some of the new Warhammer 3 Mono God units in your army but not all of them. A lot of them are locked away behind the Extended Roster, which is the new name for campaign exclusive, essentially. So in custom battles and multiplayer, things like this, like the Fiends and the Blood Letters, you won't be able to get with unit caps on anyway. But in campaign, I'm sure these units will probably be available. So you get those new Mono God units, but you also get any kind of unit that the Chaos Warriors already have. So Forsaken, you could either have the normal Forsaken or you can have the Nurgle Forsaken. The Chaos Spawn, you could have any of the different types of Chaos Spawn. You could have normal Chaos Warhounds or the Corn Chaos Warhounds. You could have a Gorby's Chariot or a Corn Gorby's Chariot. So you're able to just bring the normal types or the slightly more Mono God specific units instead. The biggest unit change to the Warriors of Chaos roster seems to come for the aspiring champions who have not only had a little bit of a visual overhaul, but they're now twice as expensive at 1,100. Why? Because they've got double the health they used to have and double the damage or double the weapon strength, I should say. So they can now be a little bit more of a staple, a great support for the front line to give that extra leadership they still encourage. They're now just a bit tougher and do more damage themselves. Not armor piercing still, but good for taking on lots of different kinds of enemy factions. So this is the new direction of the Warriors of Chaos. It's overall kind of similar to the Demons of Chaos, you may have thought, because well it is. Maybe in campaign we'll have the same limits so we're not able to make it quite like the Demons of Chaos where you're just freely able to take whatever you want whenever you want from any other faction. Or maybe you will have unlimited access to all the demons of all the mono gods and you can just essentially make another version of the Demons of Chaos faction. So what do you reckon? How do you like this new version of the Warriors of Chaos? I kind of worry that it might be a little bit too much like the Demons of Chaos and thus the Warriors of Chaos as a faction will kind of lose their identity and it'll just kind of blend into the Demons of Chaos as well, which I guess is kind of how it's supposed to be, right, lore-wise, I would think. I don't know, lore nerds, you can tell me. I guess we'll have to wait and see what they do with their campaign mechanics to really be able to tell where the Warriors of Chaos are going. Hopefully it's quite a fresh experience though, hopefully it's not a horde anymore where we have to replenish for 80 turns between attacking anybody. And the other question we have to ask is, what of the Chaos Invasion? Is that still going to be a thing? Is the Chaos still going to spawn a ton of armies if we're not playing as them and come after us or come after everybody to try and cause the good old end times? Personally, I'd still like to see it in some form, I think, but as a toggleable option, just like it is in Warhammer 2, for those who don't like it, you can simply turn it off. I know a lot of people just find it annoying, but I kind of like it when half the map just gets destroyed by this crazy unstoppable force. Anyway, let me know what you think. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.